Okay then, thank you all for coming. I'm Richard, this is Jiri. We're both from SUSE's future technology team. Um, I'm also OpenSUSE chairman, so I guess I felt that was nicer to write on this slide, but yeah. Um, and yeah, we're here to talk about sort of how to change anything in the OpenSUSE project, how you can get involved, and kind of give a bit of a sort of the philosophy behind contributing in OpenSUSE. So obviously, we're at the OpenSUSE conference. We all know where we came from. We had the keynote this morning. You know, originally started as uh, an open project promoting the use of Linux everywhere, and you know, started 2015. So you know, we're, we're not old. We're, we're classic, you know, and, and a little bit hippie, especially these days where, um, yeah, like Wojtek explained in the call this morning, uh, the session this morning. You know, OpenSUSE really has this sort of freedom to go and do what it wants, separate from what SUSE is, yeah, separate from whatever SUSE is doing on their, their enterprise side of things. Which means when I start talking about OpenSUSE now, you know, I used to just talk about OpenSUSE as a distribution. But if you look at the OpenSUSE project today, it's a project made out of many, many, many projects. Um, in fact, this slide is, is woefully out of date, and um, I can sneak peek that tomorrow it will be even more out of date, because there will be something else to add to this slide. Um, and the question then becomes, like, how did we end up with this complicated mess? You know, or, or mess, arrangement. You know, you've got all these different projects. How, how did that happen? How do projects get in, involved in OpenSUSE? What is OpenSUSE when you've got all this stuff underneath it? And, and really, at the heart of that, at the beginning of all of that, there is kind of one of these fundamental truths of open source, which is equally true, if not more true, in OpenSUSE than in many other places. That you know, every contribution, every developer, yeah, every person involved in OpenSUSE is there because they've got some itch to scratch. They know what they want to fix. They generally have an idea on how they want to fix it. And, and so the, the thing with OpenSUSE is really a case of we want OpenSUSE to be a project where we can get them involved, we can capture them into our sphere of influence, um, so you know, they can help what we're interested in as a collective group. Um, and yeah, ultimately, um, thinking it from a, from a sort of broader project perspective, as we have this whole diverse family of software in our distribution, um, you know, when something does go wrong, when something doesn't get fixed, you know, ultimately, you know, if a volunteer doesn't fix it, you're gonna have to find somebody and that can be a pain, um, you know. So you know, you don't want to have broken things lurking around your project's code base for a long time. Um, so you know, projects must provide value and and and, and time rewards for value of time for its its contributions. Everything that's coming to these contributions. And as a volunteer community, you know, it's important to realize where that sort of decision making power comes from, or where the uh, you know, who should be deciding what needs to be done. Um, you know, the best person to decide anything, in my opinion, is the person doing that thing, the volunteer involved in that. You know, the, the, the role of the project isn't there to tell people what they need to do. The role of an open source project should be to give them the tools and the environment to be able to do that, to really empower them so they can get on and change what they want to change in that project. Um, and even if you did try to tell them what you wanted them to do, quite often contributors are like donkeys. They're stubborn. They won't do it anyway. So why does so many open source projects try? Um, you know, we used to in OpenSUSE, we, we don't anymore. We, we generally don't try and force people to go and work on these features. We just try and show the situation as it is and hope people come in and get involved and fix things. So new contributors should be able to pretty much start from day one as a walking, talking part of the project. You know, they should know what they'd be able to, yeah, get involved, get started, and be able to go sort of straight from birth to being an active contributor in the project. So how do we do that in OpenSUSE? You've heard it, in fact, I've seen at least one talk where this was already mentioned. You know, those that do decide. Kind of the core principle of how contribution works in OpenSUSE. If you're doing something in OpenSUSE, you decide what gets done in OpenSUSE. And yeah, that's yeah, rule number one. We really should be talking about that far more often. But what does it mean in practice? Weird, my slide's not showing here now, sorry. Um, yeah, well, like I said, it works best when the contributor 
doing the work is the one empowered to decide what to do. That doesn't mean doing everything on your own. You know, teamwork helps. You know, you need to spread that load more than, you know, across, you know, across more than one person. You don't want to, you know, don't want to have a situation where one person gets sick or one person leaves the project and an entire part of your project falls apart. But how those, therefore, you want to pull people together into teams, but how those teams work, again, isn't a cookie cutter model. If you think of something like OpenSUSE, where we're dealing with many different upstreams and many different components in the project, all of these have different requirements. Upstreams release things at different paces. Python works a different way than Ruby does and how they release all their modules and, and, and the like. So how those teams inside OpenSUSE that are dealing with that should have the freedom to decide how to organize themselves, how to release their software, and it shouldn't all just be kind of forced into one unified, messy funnel of, you know, you must work in this way. But you do need to have some common standards, you know, and that's one thing we do a really huge amount inside OpenSUSE. But implementing that is, is generally done by consensus. You know, anybody can contribute to OpenQA to decide the release criteria for what we release via OpenQA. You know, anybody can contribute to what we do in OBS and in even, even our spec cleaning tools, they're all open source, they're all there, so it's all available to be worked on collaboratively. Um, and then those few senior people acting as gatekeepers are just there to act as gatekeepers, enforcing the criteria that the community as a collective have already decided. So there's no kind of grand overarching overlord. You know, we collectively come up with the rules and then these poor guys volunteer to make sure we stick to them. So that means anybody can contribute to OpenSUSE. Right around day one. No requesting permission, no asking for sort of, you know, maintainership of a certain package. Anybody can log into OBS. They can get an account. They can immediately start working on our code base. And that means when it comes to sort of who's in charge of OpenSUSE, it's your contributions that really do the talking. You know, automatic OBS checks, make sure things work, you know, keep on working and, and you know, it's all functionally testing. So the question when it comes to, you know, do we accept this change isn't a case of, you know, does this fit with our product vision or does this fit with, you know, SUSE's goals, which we'll talk about more later. It's really a case of, you know, will this thing work? Or will this thing cause us more of a headache down the road? Um, which is a way easier frame of mind to be approaching random contributions from a broad community. And because we have that mindset, we don't fall into this trap that many other projects have of having steering committees, engineering councils, product managers, project managers, benevolent dictators for life. All of that is unnecessary in OpenSUSE and I think that is an incredibly good thing. It makes us incredibly agile and incredibly flexible. And it avoids problems like certain distributions had with things like Systemd. If you look at examples like Debian, you know, System D did not have an easy time getting itself into Debian. There was lots of people who wanted it, there was lots of people who didn't, flame wars erupted. And yet in OpenSUSE, we were the first distribution to actually ad adopt System D, and nobody really argued with it, because a contributor did all the work, or contributors did all of the work. It was there, it was merged, it worked. It worked well enough that we made it the default eventually. There, you know. Peace, happiness, mostly. I mean, okay, the occasional mailing list framework is some people still don't like it, but it's hard to argue with the fact that it's there and it's working. And that means OpenSUSE is an incredibly agile project these days. You know, we can adopt new technologies, new ideas, whatever the crazy thing you want to work on incredibly quickly. And yet we're also flexible to kind of not do anything in one standard consistent pace or one standard consistent way of doing things. See, there are in Tumbleweed, for example, there are cases where we are the fastest distribution on the planet. And there's other cases in Tumbleweed where we're significantly behind the curve because that's the pace that our contributors have decided they want to run Tumbleweed at. And that what makes sense because, you know, that upstream is a little bit too crazy and their latest version is a little bit too broken and therefore it's best for Tumbleweed to be, you know, that little bit further behind. So, yeah, which, you know, ultimately means we have a better distribution to give to our users at the end. And yeah, as I've already said, there's sort of no restrictions on finding an innovative solution. Sometimes there have been stuff done in OpenSUSE which 
if we had strict criteria, if we had strict sort of prod project management or product controls, you wouldn't do it that way. But it makes sense for our contributors, it works, so we accept it and it works and they maintain it until, yeah, until then. But it's not all perfect. It does have some challenges with this mindset. This freedom does cause sort of a paralysis of choice. You can do anything in OpenSUSE, so what do you do? Um, and yeah, that does, especially new volunteers, does sometimes scare them away. That is one of the reasons why I'm doing this presentation, to kind of show that it's, you know, it's not that scary, it's not that intimidating. You can just pick any one thing you want to work on. Um, it does sometimes also have a habit of, of misconceptions. Us established contributors kind of get seen as, as guys who know everything and uh, making all the decisions, and you know, it's not true. <laughs> really not true. I have no idea what I'm doing most of the time. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's important to realize that you can just come to OpenSUSE with a brand new idea. You can rock the boat. Please do. It, ke it keeps us honest and makes things more interesting. Um, we really need that to you know, keep the project moving forward. But then there is, of course, at some point, what do you do when one contributor or one group of contributors has a different idea that is fundamentally incompatible with a different set of contributors. Deadlock is a real risk in this model. And so you need to have what I refer to here as, as some kind of organizational checksum. Because you know you don't want developers fighting in the street. Um, and in the past, we've, and, and in other projects, there's a tendency to, oh, sorry, I'm skipping ahead of the slide. Yeah, conflicts happen, sorry. Um, Volunteers are human, mostly. I mean, okay, we do have a couple of bots in OpenSUSE that people think are human and keep on replying to emails from, but you know, generally speaking, our volunteers are human. Um, they have different ideas, and sometimes compromises can be incredibly hard to find. And when those conflicts happen between developers, there's a real strong tendency in open source projects to see them as technical pop dis discussions or technical decisions. Um, you, and you see, you know, this is where I think so many mailing list flame wars start in so many different projects of the debating, you know, the technical minutia of this way is better versus that way, and this is right and this is wrong. The the open SUSE view, or at least the open SUSE board view on this, is this isn't a technical problem. If you have competing ideas and competing arguments to the point where you know you can't find a way of getting along in your project, it's not a technical issue. It's a human one. You have people who are disagreeing and you know you need to deal with the people, not the technical bit. There's no, you know, it doesn't matter which technical solution is best in the open source world, more often than not, in fact, the best technical solutions don't win, it's the motivated ones. Because they're the ones that have the contributions behind it. They're the ones that are gonna keep on developing six months or a year from now. So who cares which is technically the best one? It really matters which one has the people behind it and which one, you know, can you get the most motivation behind it. So it needs a human touch. You need to listen to all sides involved. They need to realize they're heard and you need to kind of look at it from a very much a, an interpersonal and a sort of emotional one, not a technical one. Sometimes, ultimately, even looking at all of that, sometimes a decision has to be made, you know, sometimes things get so split that, you know, you do have to make a hard, you know, yeah, make a final decision on a topic, um, and you know, ultimately, you know, that's a really awkward position to be in because at some point, you know, you're basically meaning someone's going to be told what they have to do, um, and it's an absolute last resort. Um, but in in OpenSUSE, we have a group of volunteers who are you know responsible for being that last resort. Um, you know, and you know, if you have a problem, no one else can help. Who do you call? The A team or more seriously, the OpenSUSE board. And that's the role the OpenSUSE board, or the main role the OpenSUSE board plays in the project. As that escalation point, when those things get stuck, you can contact board at opensuse.org. We'll step in, we'll try and help out, we'll try and smooth the waves and sort out that interpersonal problem. And if we can't, we'll be the horrible people making the final decision so everybody can blame us and no one else. Um, so, yeah. So, the environment's there. Anybody can contribute to OpenSUSE, but how do you get started? How do you sort of get involved and, and uh, yeah, actually in bare terms, 
do stuff. Um, and this is surprisingly non-technical. Um, I'm on purpose, these next slides. I, I didn't want to go into great detail about putting stuff into, into OBS or putting stuff into OpenQA because we have this broad family of different projects. It, this, this is the kind of the, the high level view of regardless of which project, my advice on how to get involved in an OpenSUSE project. And kind of to reflect that, I won't let this slide stay up there too long, but you know, when this is all uploaded, you know, we have a bunch of different mailing lists. We have a bunch of different IRC channels. That's the best way of getting in touch initially with our contributors, with our projects, with those teams. The list is even longer, um, obviously. That's why I've listed like lists at OpenSUSE.org and all of our free node channels. Um, you know, those teams do all scatter around there, but it's nice to know this is Generally speaking, most of the project is mailing list and IRC-centric with a good chunk of GitHub these days as well, which I realize I forgot to put on there. The starting point is really doing your homework, figuring out what do you want to do. Understand what your problem is, the topic you want to fix, whatever it is. Don't make assumptions. Don't read the register and other news articles and think those journalists know what they're talking about. Really figure out the problem from your perspective of what needs to be fixed in OpenSUSE. So, you know, do your research, have a look at the OpenSUSE wiki, have a look at the Arch wiki, have a look at anyone else's projects. What is, what is the rest of the open source world doing? Um, and, and figure out how you want to see that implemented in OpenSUSE. Um, and, and start at this point the discussion. You know, this is why we're at OpenSUSE. I've uh, OpenSUSE conference. I've been doing this already for the, all this morning. You know, bounce these ideas off other people. Start just getting a feel for for what other people think about what you're thinking of, what you want to change. Um, and yeah, really get a sort of strong base of knowledge that you have understood the problem that you're trying to fix. And then carry on doing a little bit more of homework. You know have some rough plan for how you want to fix it. You know, what do you want the end goal to look like? You don't have to have all of the details. In fact, the details will change anyway when you start implementing it. But have a rough idea of, of what you want the final outcome to be and, and, and where you want the, the project to look when you're done. The details are totally and utterly optional, but you need to have a, a rough idea of this because this is the bit you really need to start when you start explaining it to other people. You know, how are you going to get more people involved to work with you on this crazy plan? That is, if you want anybody to help you. If you think you know what you're doing, you've figured out your plan, you don't need anybody to help you, then just do it. There's no, you know, no like I said, no permission required, everything's already open, just contribute. But if you do need help, then you need to share it with the project. And so, at least for the distributions, the best place for that is, is okay, okay, fine. Anyway, um, yeah, if you're working on the distributions, the best place for that is the OpenSUSE factory mailing list and basically present your idea, present the plan, you know, basically present your couple of paragraphs of homework from everything you've been thinking about, and avoid presenting it as an open question. Don't ask, what do you think of this? Because you will get 500 answers, um, and none of them will be helpful. Um, most of them will be negative. Um, you know, present it from the point of view of, this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, this is how I intend to do it. Um, because if you do it that way, then it's now the community's responsibility to stop you. Um, and as confrontational as that may sound, it actually ends up really focusing that feedback so you're going to get decent, constructive, or more useful feedback of why you shouldn't do things that way and how you should be doing it differently. Um, and that I've, I've seen time and time again, when that approach has been taken, the conversations are far more helpful and the, the final conclusions are exactly what, you know, exactly what the project needs. Maybe not what was originally discussed, but exactly what the project really needs to, to solve that problem. So you need to listen to that feedback. You need to consider that feedback. You don't necessarily need to do everything that feedback says. You know, we are a smart bunch of people. That doesn't necessarily mean we're always right. Um, and yeah, if you listen to all of that feedback and you're still sure that your way of doing things is how you want to do it, well then, good luck to you. Go ahead. You know, we'll see how it works when it's in the distributions. Um, 
But if you do decide at this point that, okay, I was wrong, you know, it's not a failure to just admit at that point and you know, stop what you're doing. Um, in fact, you know, there's enough threads on Factory that if people go back and think about that in the context of this, you can see plenty of examples where I've suggested stuff on Factory and then it never happened because people were right when they said I was wrong. It's a learning experience and that's a good thing. But if you are getting that feedback, the fast feedback really helps. You know, don't just post on the mailing list, fire and forget and ignore all the replies. Do respond, do engage, because th those discussions are how you find volunteers to help you with that. You know, there's been plenty of times in OpenSUSE where I've proposed an idea, people have argued about it, said I was crazy, said I was nuts, and then I ended up with a team of five people, half of them who thought I was nuts, um, working on the thing with me, because they wanted to make sure it was right. Um, so that's how you really, that's how these self-organized teams start, more often than not. Decide what you want to do, and do it. It's really that simple. Um, and sometimes from these discussions and, and this way, you, en you do end up with multiple solutions to a problem, um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, if you look at OpenSUSE, you know, how many desktop environments do we have? This is how we ended up with that. You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Why not do all of them if you have people behind it pushing for it? And so that's it. Do it. You're all set. Get started. Get cracking. Do whatever you want to do in OpenSUSE. It's an open project. Opens in the name. The clue's there. And normally at this point, I end up with people asking me, well, yeah, but what about those corporate guys? You know, what about SUSE? You know, aren't they controlling what you guys are doing? You know, aren't they deciding what needs to be done? Um, and, yeah, okay, this is like, I know the third talk about this kind of today, because I didn't realize everybody else was talking on this topic, but, um, yeah, you know, open SUSE is truly an independent open source project. Yes, it's sponsored by SUSE, SUSE are backing us, SUSE are paying for a lot of this this weekend, um, but not the only sponsor. We have others like IP Exchange, B1 Systems, who are here as well, um, and Applied Micro. Um, but SUSE believes in open source the same way OpenSUSE believes in open source. You know, SUSE's contributions to OpenSUSE are done as peers, not as controllers in any way. And, you know, engineers are encouraged to spend less free time in here. I mean, you know, just as a raise of hands, how many SUSE engineers are in the room? Yeah, see? <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, you all know how it works. Um, yeah, so there are plenty of examples, like we hear, Leap 15 launch day, you know, Leap 15 is based on SLE, you know, it's a wonderful example of, of how the, the, the two different communities, in essence, work together, work on the same code base. Tumbleweed is the base for SLE engineering. Um, but all of that close working together doesn't mean that SUSE's, OpenSUSE's direction is controlled by SUSE. There are an equal number of examples where OpenSUSE diverges from SUSE. Um, you know, for example, actually, I'm skipping ahead of a slide again. What, what, my slide bits are completely messed up. Sorry. Yeah, we're all using the same tools. Um, and um, in fact, like you heard this morning in the keynote, you know, a lot of the things like CI, like OpenQA, like a lot of the reproducible building that you see in, Open Su in SUSE now, all started in OpenSUSE. So it's not just a case of, of code contributions flowing, it's also a case of, of philosophy and engineering processes and, and design which you know, transfers from OpenSUSE to SUSE when SUSE realized that's the better way of building this stuff, that's the better way of testing this stuff. So it really is a two-way street. You know, OpenSUSE gets our wonderful code base for Leap, SUSE gets their wonderful code base for, for SLE, we share everything in between. Um, but it doesn't mean we do everything exactly the same way. Like I said, an equal number of cases where OpenSUSE diverges away. Um, this list is getting longer and longer, in fact, but you know, the obvious ones, you know, the default desktop in OpenSUSE is KDE. SLE doesn't even have KDE anymore. You know, diff we have a completely different style of the distribution when it comes to the product. You know, SLES is m lean, modular, everything's these different components that customers can pick and choose depending on how they want. And we distribute Leap as one large distribution in one large repo because that's the way we think is best to do it. 
and we have a completely different installation workflow. In fact, we have a completely different installation workflow in like every different, uh, yeah, every different product that we have in OpenSUSE, like Casp and Cubic and the, the like. Um, and to kind of yeah, give the sort of more visual example of how that all works, that's why Jimmy's here because he works on the YAS team. So you know, the YAS team are perhaps the the most SUSE controlled part of OpenSUSE in the sense of they're almost all the developers are entirely employed by SUSE and they're working on SUSE products. But even there, as you can explain, it's entirely open and yeah, how it all works. So over to you now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Richard. So uh, let me talk about uh, how we uh, develop uh, YAST. Oh. So first of all, what, what is YAST? Uh, YAST uh, stands uh, for yet another setup tool. Uh, actually, I joined the company more than 16 years ago, and when I joined the company, uh, the installation and configuration tool of, at that point of time, SUSE Linux uh, was called YAST. So nothing changed. It was completely homegrown, uh, home-developed solution. Uh, project started in uh, SUSE from scratch, uh, developed uh, by uh, a team uh, team which was uh, completely part of uh, SUSE here in Prague and in Nuremberg. And uh, to some extent, this is how it is uh, until today. Of course, uh, back then, uh, all the development was uh, in-house. Uh, we wrote it in a proprietary uh, programming language. Even though you got the source code, not all parts uh, were under a free license. All the communication was inside the company, uh, which is something that uh, has changed nowadays. The, all the communication channels are uh, public, hosted by OpenSUSE, fr Freenode. Uh, the repository is public, so we do uh, our work way more uh, in uh, open. Even though uh, the team is uh, inside SUSE, uh, you, it still allows you uh, to contribute. There are really many options. I put uh, just three of them uh, here on the slides. Uh, YAST consists of uh, modules which are more or less independent. So if you are brave enough, uh, you can uh, write your own new module. Uh, does anybody have any idea of module which was uh, written by a community, community member uh, who was ne not, and I think never, employee of SUSE. There was one called one-click installer. The, yeah, it was, it was developed by Benji Weber. And uh, there is one more example, which was uh, the GT GTK backend for the user interface. It was also also written by somebody out of SUSE, or at least out of the AS team uh, here. I do not know whom exactly. Well, uh, writing your own module might be a bit too much uh, for the beginning. So you may start uh, fixing your old, fixing your favorite bug, uh, which bothers you most, or uh, maybe you are lacking some functionality, so this is what you can do. So how do you provide your code? As Richard mentioned, uh, all the code lives uh, in the open build service. Uh, here on the slide, I put a link uh, to the development project uh, where all the packages which uh, go to OpenSUSE factory are, are uh, hosted. So, <clears throat> if you, so this this is where any package uh, will end up. Of course, this is uh, for OpenSUSE factory. If you want to provide a package for any older release, uh, they have their own sub-projects. Anyway, yeah, most of the teams uh, do not work only on build service because it has no conflict resolution and uh, that they, the team benefit uh, of, uh, of version control systems like, well, 16 years ago it was uh, CVS for Yast and then subversion nowadays. It is Git, and uh, yeah, just uh, lives in the GitHub repository. So, how to contribute uh, properly? 
Here I put on the slide the link uh, to the YAST, YAST project on GitHub, uh, which hosts all YAST repositories. So the easiest way, and uh, I have, I can see at least two members of the YAST team here in the room. Uh, they can confirm that uh, this is the way we appreciate most is find the repository where you want to add new stuff, fork the repository, work on your fork, and when you think that you are ready uh, to be merged uh, to our code, then create a pull request. Uh, the reason for pull request is not something like we do not trust you to give you access to the repository directly. Uh, this is how we work on our own as well. Uh, it uh, has various advantages. One of the rules we have in the team is uh, that all code before it gets merged uh, should be reviewed by at least one other developer. And uh, the pull request scheme, uh, which is provided by GitHub, uh, it serves this purpose more or less perfectly. Uh, anybody who can comment on uh, your changes, uh, give you feedback, uh, you can discuss it uh, in GitHub. Uh, then later, if the one who gave you the initial feedback goes on vacation, anybody else uh, can step in, uh, has all the history. So it's a nice uh, platform for the communication based communication for the code changes. Uh, and uh, we also have various uh, tools uh, hooked into the pull request, which, which means, uh, for example, uh, you can see before you merge your changes whether the package will build after after your uh, change is merged. Uh, you can see that you cut uh, the test coverage of the package into half if you did uh, more changes. So all these checks can be done before your code, code is merged and uh, it uh, prevents uh, submitting package which is uh, anyhow wrong. So after the discussion about uh, your code and if it's your first submission, probably there will be some, you get the package merged into the Git repository and as long as uh, we are working on a factory, uh, or the automation behind uh, will take care that the package appears in the develop project and uh, later a submit request uh, to factory is uh, created. Of course, uh, or not, maybe not of course, uh, but you might need uh, some help uh, when you uh, implement your change. Uh, the best way to get help, of course, is to ask. Uh, the YAS team uh, communicates uh, almost exclusively on a public mailing list on, or in a public IRC channel. Here you have uh, the links uh, on uh, <coughs> on uh, in the slide, so whatever is more convenient for you, whatever you prefer, either send us a mail or uh, connect to the IRC channel and ask. Uh, just keep in mind why, one thing, uh, especially if you live on the other at the end of the planet, uh, the team is uh, located uh, only in two time zones, time zones uh, next to each other. Uh, so Australian noon is not the best time to ask on IRC. So you created a pull request and nothing happened. Well, of course, it doesn't put us into the best light, uh, but it, uh, it can happen. Uh, it happens for pull requests of the ASTI members too. So the only thing you can do and uh, you should do is uh, contact us and uh, remind us about your changes and if you do it in the right time, then I'm pretty sure that somebody from the team uh, will give you the feedback which you are you are searching for. Important, uh, but I think that's true for all open source projects. Do not take any feedback you might get uh, personally. None, nobody, nobody from the team is a native uh, English speaker. Uh, we come from different environments, so whatever. If uh, something uh, sounds okay for somebody, somebody else uh, may take it personally. We never mean it. Uh, what we want to do is uh, really to find a way uh, to get uh, your changes to a state uh, in which they can be merged and uh, 
really get them uh, to the project. So if you want to help uh, with Yast and are you uh, searching uh, for what could I do? Yes, there is definitely a lot of work which you could do. Uh, if you do not have your favorite bug which bothers you or you don't feel uh, that you want, you are able to fix it, uh, uh, we, the, the Yas team has uh, so many bugs uh, that to be to be honest to ourselves, they cannot uh, they cannot be fixed uh, in reasonable time by the team itself. Uh, that's why we try to identify bugs which, uh, in our uh, view, seem to be easy enough so that uh, anybody who does not have that much experience can fix them, and uh, we put them on on a specific assignee in Bugzilla. So, if you would like to get inspiration, what to start with? Uh, this is a recommendation where you find bugs which uh, uh, we believe that uh, you will be able to fix. So, want to learn more? I put on the slide uh, two links uh, to the YAS documentation. Uh, they should give you they should give you a hints uh, what to start, what to learn, how to start. Anyway. Uh, have you ever seen a documentation which is perfect? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody did. And uh, if you look into it, find something missing, again, please tell us. If you do not tell us what uh, is missing in the documentation, you can be sure that we will not fix it, because for us it seems obvious. And uh, until somebody who is not familiar with the topic reviews it, uh, <clears throat> it will remain in our view uh, this way. That's fine. Hello? Yep, good. Yep, so... Yeah, yeah so just to sort of, yeah, in closing, you know, you decide whatever happens, you know, Susan. You know, there's nobody else, you know, it's up to you entirely what the project looks like. Not a single part of the project is off limits to contribution. Um, we've, we've even had cases uh, like, well, Tumbleweed's a fun example, um, you know, and yeah, for years the Tumbleweed release manager was in essence a community contributor, well, was a community contributor, didn't have anything to do with SUSE until SUSE hired him, but, you know, uh, yeah, the project is here to help and uh, have a lot of fun. Does anybody have any questions, comments, feedback, shouting? No? Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.